just make sure it's recording. All right. That's good. It can record for eight hours and 33 minutes at that setting. Hey guys, Tony here, and this video is the part two of my living room 7.2.4 home theater, which has taken me quite a bit of time to get done, but I can say is finally finished. Well, almost. I am changing my surrounds from the Crix Triptychs over to the Crix Hyperphonics 45, which are the same as my dedicated room, and also my back surrounds, I am getting some brand new Crix Phoenix Tower speakers to replace my Lyrix Golds, which have become a little worse for wear after too much handling. I am going to clean off the Duratex pill coat and restore them back to the Jarra finish and give them to my son to use. There isn't going to be a part three, but I will do a full room tour video in a similar format to my other room tour videos. But this one is going to be a full time-lapse breakdown of the room, explaining what I did and the reason behind the decisions, as this is something that I know a lot of people who want to build a home theater in a casual space or living room come up against a lot of constraints. So I'm going to break it down how how I got around some of these issues and I'll explain my choices. Make sure you drop me a comment down below with any questions you may have, including telling me about your living room setup. But let's get into the video. So the first thing that I did was to hire some furniture movers on Airtasker to come and help me bring the 90 kilogram Valencia Theatre seating Grand Barcelona recliners up to the first floor. These chairs are not only huge and heavy, but quite awkward to pick up. And as I just had a cortisone injection in my wrist, I needed some help to bring them up. The reason I brought the chairs up before starting was because I needed to work out things like throw distance for my projector, seated distance from the screen, and also how high up to place the screen. So as I've said in previous videos, starting at the seated position for your planning is very important. Once they were up, I had to try and reposition them myself as I had a nice rug for them to go on and hide my cables as well as to stop them from leaving indents in the carpet. They have a full selection of RGB lights and my first time sitting in them, they were really comfortable. I've gone with two seats for this space and I will do a full review on them in a separate video, but they are big and chunky, wide with a low back so that when sitting upright, I can get the full effect of the back surround speakers. They are more suited to a space like this and I absolutely love them. I will leave links to them down in the description. Next, I enlisted the help of my boys to give me a hand taking the setup apart in preparation for running the cables and also for the installation of the wall panels. It didn't take too long to get everything moved out of the way and also putting all of the cables in a neat pile for when we put everything back together. So the wife and I decided to go with an MDF style wall panel from Bunnings. It has narrow strips and is primed ready for painting. I will say that I should have listened to her when she said paint the panels when they were downstairs as it was an absolute nightmare trying to paint them when they were on the wall. My biggest tip is to at least paint a single coat so that you don't have to spend the extra two days, which I don't have on camera, where I had to use a fine paintbrush to go and paint the top and the bottom of every column. Painful doesn't even describe it. Anyway, my dad had just come around for a visit when I started to do the install, so he stuck around to give me a hand. It took a little time to measure and cut everything to size, including cutting the holes for the power points, but we got it done and I was able to secure the panels to the wall with my nail gun. We had to take the panels down for a quick trim as the walls are not straight or plumb. So we had to make a couple of adjustments, but in the end, we got them all attached. This was probably the most time consuming and difficult part of the whole rebuild, but I learned a lot and in the end, we got it done. I then put some beading down on each side to close the gaps and finish it off nicely. As I knew my electricians were still a couple of weeks away, I both wanted to use the room, but also needed to start test fitting everything for when they came, which meant putting everything back into position. Before I did that though, I wanted to build the frame for the LED lights. I started by placing the vortex center speaker so that I could work out the distance and measure with my eye line when seated. I started by securing my timber with my nailer into place and working my way round according to the pre-measure and cut that I did prior, I got the frame built, leaving a small gap on the right side to tuck the cables in. I then ran all of the LEDs around the frame and got the screen mounted. I also decided that I would get my electricians to install some LifeX bulbs in the ceiling, which were also left over from my main home theater. 
So I got the frame built and installed the LifeX lights and it turned out exactly how I wanted it. This is a 100 inch screen which has since been replaced because in the time that it took me to make this video, I had to do a UST projector review and the company insisted on my using a 120 inch screen that they had sent me. I'll show you more on that later. Next we had to prepare all of the speakers and the electronics, getting things into place for the electricians. So my son and I unboxed the Crix IC50 speakers and then got to work unboxing the Yamaha RX-A88 receiver, mentioned in part one, so that I could do the 7.2.4 speaker layout. I'm going to do a full review on this receiver and show how I'm using it with an amplifier I recently bought, which is the Yamaha MX-A5000, so that I could buy out my main speakers. However, at this point, I hadn't even decided that I was going to change my main speakers, but this is just how projects go. Especially me, my brain is always thinking and sometimes I just make snap decisions to do something. So as we had to wait for the electricians, my son wanted to do all of the cable management for my electronics. So he wired everything up and it was in place for a couple of weeks before before the electricians came over, so we were able to enjoy the setup for a little bit as well. Again, I am now using the X Jimmy Horizon Ultra, but I had every intention of using the JMGO N1 Ultra, which I even bought a special pole mount for, and so I knew the distance for it to be mounted, I put it on a coffee table and set it up so that I could see it all work. Everything just seemed to be coming together. So finally, it was time for my electricians to come and install the HDMI cable for the projector, as well as all of the additional power points and audio cables for the overhead speakers. There was a bit of Pythagoras theorem involved in working out the overhead speakers so that we could get the correct angles using the Dolby Atmos guide for 7.2.4. The boys have been doing work in my home theater downstairs and other electrical work over the last few years and as always their work has been impeccable. In the end I had four speakers installed overhead and cabled back to the receiver as well as my four down lights with my LifeX GU10 bulbs so that I could then program in lighting automation for pause and play which was really cool. It was then time to paint the wall. As I said earlier, it was a total pain in the butt. I didn't end up recording the two full days of me hunched over with a paintbrush, but in the end, the job got done. The paint color I used was the same as my theater room with Torbman's Black Fox, and I think it turned out really well, allowing for the light to dance across the panels while also making the screen pop out in the darkness. It was then time to clean up and put all of the electronics back in place. While all of this had been happening, I had decided that I was going to put my Lyrics Gold Towers at the back of the room and I'd ordered a set of Crix Harmonics Towers which are a perfect match for the Vortex Center. I managed to get these delivered during the day before the wife noticed and I got them installed and in place. You can see how much more volume these cabinets have as well as being a three-way design. This was when I decided I was going to buy amp the whole LCR. So I started also hunting for the Yamaha MX A5000 amplifier. Fast forward a little and it was time for me to get cracking on my new projector reviews. So my dad came around to give me a hand with the screen and this meant that I could make videos which may or may not be live on my channel at the time of recording this. The screen is a 120 inch ALR screen designed for ultra short throws, so it's definitely not staying in this setup, but until I get my new screen, which I'm still deciding on, possibly an elite screen 120 inch, it's going to remain in place. It still works with my ceiling mounted projector, which is now the X Jimmy Horizon Ultra, which I decided to keep because it does Dolby Vision and has optical zoom. So I was able to place it behind the seated position and it's super quiet, even in high power mode, I can't hear it at all. So that one is in place and I can't wait to get the new screen, which will really help with the contrast. So I will do a separate video on this, but it was now time to make all of the cables for the new speakers. And as I had decided on an amp as well, I decided to make my own cables. I had a reel of two core black shielded speaker cable with excellent banana plugs from Bunnings, which don't need to be screwed in. And it was so quick and easy to make these cables. Anyone who says bi amping doesn't give you a performance boost is dead wrong. Subjective or not, confirmation bias or not, I instantly heard a much deeper, fuller, richer sound with a lot more separation between the speakers from before. It was instantly noticeable. Again, I will do a full video on this soon, but I wanted to get this video out first. Once I'd finished up the cabling, I did a final tidy up of the room and it was time to enjoy it. So I'll now go over some of the things that I did and explain my reasoning behind them. 
First of all, I didn't run the surrounds or the back surround cables inside the walls as it was just not possible to do. I decided to run them in cable sleeving along the edges of the room and you don't even notice them. And I think it looks perfectly neat and tidy. I could have run under the carpet, but they are chunky cables and they may not have looked very good. I also used the cable tidy box where I have all of my cables terminating and then have the back surround cables going under the mat to hide them. I also tucked all of the power cables for the chairs and the charging cables under the chairs so that you don't see them when you come up the stairs. For the remote I am using the Harmony Elite which my buddy Ben managed to source for me. I also have it connected through Home Assistant so I am using the same technology to run pause and play up here as I do in my dedicated room. Paired with my LifeX LEDs and LifeX lighting I am able to have a seamless experience when watching movies. I don't have to fumble for my phone. To make things even easier, I also bought some flick buttons, which I have one at the stairs and another at the main chair. I still haven't 3D printed my Harmony stand yet, but when I do, I will have a slot behind it to put in the flick remote. This allows me to turn the lights on and off without even using the remote if the system is off. I'll show more of that in my upcoming room tour. So last pieces of the puzzle as mentioned is my ceiling mounted X Jimmy Horizon Ultra. Yes, I put my money where my mouth is. After the review I did on it, I'm now using it in my setup and I see no reason to change it. I did a full review on it, so you can check the links up here in the cards or in the description down below. This thing is fantastic. It's got LED and a laser light source. It's nice and bright and does Dolby Vision, which is something that I really appreciate. I have ordered, as mentioned at the start of the video, the Crix Hyperphonics 45 to mount on the sides and angle them at the seats. One of the biggest criticisms I got from people in my part one video is that the chairs were behind the side surrounds. Now, I have done my absolute best to bring them as close as I dare, but while the surrounds are slightly forward, they are within tolerance for giving the impression that the sound is coming from the sides and not from the front. This compromise is because I have a staircase and my daughter's bedroom to contend with and there is no way of getting past it or having a solution other than placing them where they are without doing something silly like mounting them on the narrow strip of jib rock, which is out of the question. Sometimes you have to do things not 100% to spec, but I can tell you that the end result of this room is absolutely incredible. This doesn't feel like a casual media room, it feels a lot like a dedicated home theater. When the lights are off, the sound and vision is awesome. I'm going to make a full dedicated video on the final result, so make sure that you stick around for that one. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and why not let me know what you think down in the comments section. I have more videos coming very soon and I really wanted to get them done before I take a break in time for Christmas. A very big thank you for everyone involved in helping me complete this project. But that's it for this one. You'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now.